hey, conservative party brass, can you folks start paying attention? Your supporters are sick and tired of liberals passing themselves off as conservatives. And then there were six, six candidates vying to be the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, that is. You see, while absolutely nobody was paying attention, the sorta, kinda, maybe conservative Leona Alislev dropped out of the leadership race after failing to come up with the full $300,000 in entry fees. Gee, I wonder why Miss Alislev couldn't make this fiscal benchmark. Could it be that grassroots conservatives are sick and tired of liberals in conservative clothing running for the leadership? Especially given that the last stud to dud was Aaron O'Toole, who transformed himself into Mr. Liberal Light in the last election, flip-flopping on carbon taxes and the gun grab. We've actually eliminated Mr. Trudeau's carbon tax and allowed transparency for every Canadian every small business, every farming family will see what their carbon footprint is. And thereby dooming himself to humiliating defeat at the hands of Prime Minister Blackface Mick Grabber. As a sidebar note, folks, perhaps one of the greatest victories of the Ottawa trucker convoy was O'Toole being ousted as leader. To this day, nobody knows what O'Toole's position is on the convoy, which speaks volumes about this Tory edition of Mr. Dithers and why he is now yesterday's man. But back to the issue of the current crop of fake conservatives, because with the departure of Alislav, the field is restricted to Jean Charest, the former liberal premier of Quebec for eight years. Let's start with uh, Huawei and you know what, what we did in Huawei. I'm very proud of what we did. And of course, sneaky Patrick Brown, full-time mayor of Brampton and part-time Zamboni inspector. You're in, a, you're in a city facility? What's that? You're in a city facility? Yeah, so are yeah. you. Yeah. So are you yeah. playing hockey here? Or? No, I'm just coming to check in our facility. So okay, I'm gonna, we're yeah. gonna check you. You're, you're not supposed to be here actually. Okay. Brown would have been Premier of Ontario going back to 2018, but you see, he threw social conservatives under the bus, and then he threw fiscal conservatives under the bus, and when there were no more conservatives left to screw over, the PC party thankfully threw crybaby Patrick Brown under the bus. But just check out the bona fides of Leona Alislav. She was actually voted in as a Liberal member of Parliament, for Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill back in 2015. Now, full disclosure, I live in this riding, but Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill is one of those swing ridings, and the scuttlebutt was that internal polling in 2018 was indicating that the riding was going to go conservative again in 2019. So it was that Alislav crossed the floor. I must withdraw from the government benches to take my seat among the ranks of my conservative colleagues and join Her Majesty's loyal. Join the conservatives and for reasons beyond my comprehension, then leader Andrew Scheer made her deputy leader. Maybe it was to entice other liberals to cross the floor, who knows? Alas and alack, last year, the riding swung back to Team Red and Alislav was out of a job. Oh, karma is a witch, isn't it folks? Now, even though I am a constituent in Alice Lev's writing, I've never been able to have a conversation with Leona. I reached out to Alice Lev regarding her decision to step down as a candidate, and her response was the following, quote, Thank you so very much for this invitation, but I will not be doing any interviews at this time. Wishing you well, end quote. Well, it was a polite decline, at least, but it was kind of reminiscent of the response the other day I received on Parliament Hill from Witchy Poo. Okay, then. No more comments. All right. But no more comments. It just seems to be... No more comments. Okay. No more comments. You can't articulate no your position? No more comments. Wow. No more comments. Have I triggered you? No more comments. No more comments. No more comments. <laughs> no more comments. It's like interviewing a no Coke machine comments. when your soda doesn't come no out. No more comments. <laughs> she just. No more comments. 
It's, no more comments. It's like a no more comments. a fembot no has more malfunctioned. Comments. And you think no that if somebody is going no to comments. go on a corner, walk away. No more comments. Why do I have to walk, walk away? away. Walk away. No more comments. No more comments. Why do I have to no walk away? It's a public place. No more comments. No more comments. No more comments. Do you mind no me asking, what do you do for a living? No more comments. I'm now interviewing no a sign. Comments. Why is it no when the left comments. can't articulate itself, no it goes into comments. a meltdown? No. Well, then again, no comment is par for the course for Alice Laff. The last time I bumped into her was at a vigil in 2020 in Richmond Hill for those Canadians who were assassinated by the Iranian government when Ukraine International Airlines 752 was shot down. All 176 people on board were killed, including 55 Canadian citizens and 30 permanent residents. There were politicians of all levels and all political stripes at the Richmond Hill Performing Arts Centre. But conspicuous by his absence, however, was the MP for Richmond Hill, Majid Johari. That was probably a good move on his part, folks, given that most of the attendees were Persian Canadians, the type of people who fled Iran's tyranny. But Johari is incredibly a supporter of the murderous Iranian regime. If he had dared to show his face, it might have been an unsafe scenario for him, given how emotional this vigil was. Yet post-vigil, when I sought comment from Leona Alislav, check out what happened. He is a supporter of this regime. And this has rubbed so many in this community the wrong way. I am wondering, do you have any insight for our viewers, Ms. Alislav, why this man is even still in caucus. Uh, I don't, and thank you very much. Have a good evening. But Ms. Elsa, you used to work with him, didn't you? Yeah, can you believe it? She literally ran away. I imagine she didn't want to say something impolite or insensitive about her former caucus member and friend. Despicable. Bottom line, in a way, I must applaud Ms. Alislav for leading by example in abandoning her quest for Conservative Party leader. Now my wish is this. Can the other fake Conservatives, yeah, I'm looking at you, Mr. Charest and Mr. Brown, follow suit and get the hell out of Tory town? Hey, I'm not saying you can't run for office, but know your role, which is to say run under Liberal Red or NDP Orange. This party is already way too infected with phony baloney Tories. And that's the primary reason this party has languished as the official opposition these past seven years. All of which brings me to my final point, which is this. Hey, Conservative Party brass, can you folks start paying attention? Your supporters are sick and tired of liberals passing themselves off as conservatives. Capiche? For Rebel News, I'm David Demenzoid Menzies.